The dating scene these days are nowhere as good as they used to be. What happened to courtship? Taking a lady out to a movie? Bringing her flowers? Or at the very least opening her car door? The 90s for instance seemed like it was cut from a fairy tale. The pomp and circumstance it took to wow a lady over. I mean really. Would it kill a guy to stand outside in the rain, holding a boombox, and professing his love for the woman he wanted to spend the rest of his life with? Now we're stuck with the random bar hookups and dating apps. People have the attention span of a goldfish when it comes to the thought of choosing their soulmate. It's speed dating gone mad. I for one though will never use another dating app ever again. Not after what happened to my best friend Tiffany. She was honestly the most kind-hearted person I've ever met. The girl would give you the shirt off of her back and not ask for anything in return. And if we're talking about beauty, she had that in tenfold. Long bleach, blonde hair that came to the small of her back. She literally looked like she'd never seen a split end in her life. Her smile was as white as fresh snow, and it was unusually perfect. Like, one of those smiles that people say would light up a room. She went to the gym regularly, so she was toned in all the right places. I swear she snuck off to Miami and had a secret BBL procedure. She was about 5'2 so she would get called a snack-sized meal quite often. But it was like she didn't know her own beauty you know? Like, she didn't act stuck up or anything like that. If she had an Instagram she would easily have a million followers in a day. I kept instigating her to hop on Snapchat, but she didn't particularly like the idea of random people adding her, asking for nudes. She was a bookworm that got straight A's all through high school. She opted to follow her passion as a therapist for young kids, so she breezed through college with ease. We vowed to follow each other wherever life had taken us. I opted to go into the accounting field, so life had taken us on different paths. No matter, we were BFFs and had made a promise. We ended up moving to San Diego to pursue our careers. I landed a job at ProfitWise Accounting, while she worked in the town at a local clinic for troubled youth. I must say, for two 24-year-olds, life was pretty good. We split the bills, took turns on the chores, even made Sunday our teen cooking day. But one thing was missing. Boys. I met a guy in the office that treated me surprisingly good. Tiffany, however, was struggling to get past the first date. Most guys saw her and would instantly try for sex or head straight into the marriage route. Not to throw her business out there, but Tiffany had only been with two guys at the time. One being her high school crush and the other being her longtime college boyfriend. She was more into the committed side of things. I had my fun in college and explored myself to see what I liked. Not to go too in-depth into my own adventures. Tiffany wanted the kind of guy that would call her at 2 p.m. on a Thursday just to see if she had eaten. Talk to her all night on the phone until they both fell asleep. I guess that kind of guy stopped existing after minutes were free all day, instead of after 9 p.m. The days here were lovely though. We would gather together to have a picnic in the park, or go downtown and find our new favorite place to eat. That slowed down after I met Richard. We hit it off quick. Within a month he was spending the night in our apartment, or I was over to his condo. Leaving Tiffany as the dreaded third wheel. It wasn't on purpose though. Life threw curveballs at us, and we reacted different to each pitch. I felt bad for her as she saw Richard bring me flowers, or when I would tell her how he made a lunch for us to split at work. I knew that's the kind of guy she wanted, but couldn't find. Tiffany being Tiffany though would always say, Becca, as long as you're happy and healthy, then I'm happy. Cliché words, but I couldn't help feel that she was hiding her true feelings of being single. I would respond back, thanks girly, but one thing I know, is that you need to get laid. She would turn as red as a strawberry. Listen. Richard does make me happy, but do you know why? I asked. It's because he feeds me, and then gives me the pipe for dessert. She couldn't control her laughter when I would say things like that. 
She's a goody two shoes, but she's my goody two shoes. Richard would toss guys' names around that he worked with that he thought would be a good match for Tiffany, but in the end she would respectfully decline. I mean, I'm by no means a gold digger, but these guys were making high six figures a year. Not to mention some of them were absolutely gorgeous men. Maybe after her last breakup, Tiffany turned into a lesbian. No matter the case she needed a good nightcap to get her back on her game. One night me and Richard formulated a plan to set Tiffany up on a blind date. We would invite her out with us to Fleming Steakhouse. One of the more ritzy places to eat. Richard assured her the tab was on him. He just wanted to see her have a good time. It took some convincing but eventually she agreed to go out with us. Step 1 was complete. He had a buddy named Theo that he thought would woo her enough to get the elusive second date from her. So with that, the night began. We pulled up in Richard's Mercedes, I swear it felt like we were Hollywood stars pulling up to our first movie premiere. Not too shabby for two girls from South Dakota. We were dressed from head to toe. Me, in a black dress that hugged every curve on my body. Richard couldn't take his eyes off me. My double D's pushed up, showing just enough cleavage to keep the imagination going. I wore heels that turned my 5'5 stature into a solid 5'11. I had just gotten my hair dyed jet black, so it was flowing in the wind, but not too much. Then there stood Tiffany. Her red dress that was down to her ankles, her hair pinned up, and she actually stepped out of her comfort zone and had a bit of cleavage showing also. We were the main attraction for the night. So much so that we drew attention in from the people passing by in the street or that were seated in the restaurant. Richard walked us and told us to have a seat at the bar while he got our reservations in order. We ordered a round of martinis and put them on Richard's tab. He was such a great guy, I swear he's something out of a romance novel. As we sat at the bar there was a guy in a plain black shirt that couldn't take his eyes off of Tiffany. I watched him as he looked her up and down. His hair was a little scruffy, jeans were cut to form around the top of his black boots, and had both arms covered in a sleeve of tattoos. Those hazel eyes analyzed her from top to bottom numerous times. We were used to that, as she drew that sort of attention from 90% of the dudes and ladies that saw her. She didn't pay him any attention, but I was watching him like a hawk. Hey buddy. Do you like what you see? If so you should buy her a drink, I said in my overprotective mom voice. Tiffany's head snapped towards his direction as he responded, sorry about that. It's just I've never seen a model come in here before. I'm Jeremy. What's your name? He reached his hand out to give her his open move, but luckily Richard showed up letting us know our table was ready. I got up from the bar, but Tiffany stayed still. I've never seen her act like this. She had a slight smile on her face, and her eyes locked on him as if she were in a trance. She slowly put her hand into his and responded with, My name's Tiffany. It's nice to meet you, Jeremy. Has she lost her mind? This street urchin actually had her at a loss for words. Richard, with a little more bass in his voice this time repeated himself to let us know our table was ready. Tiffany broke her hypnotized state and followed us to the table. She looked back a few times to fill her eyes with his presence as he gave her a wave until she was a good distance away from the bar. This guy was really killing our night. Finally we were at our designated table. There was a gentleman already sitting there awaiting our arrival. He stood up and held his hand out to Tiffany to introduce himself. Hi! They call me, I mean, my name is, shit, what's my name again bro, he slurred as he stumbled. You've got to be kidding me, is this moron already drunk? We had been in the restaurant for 15 minutes, and this douchebag was already loaded. He reeked of Jameson, and cheap cologne. This was Theo? The mesmerizing guy that was supposed to whisk Tiffany off into marriage? This wasn't the Prince Charming that Richard had promised. Damn, baby girl. You're hot as hell. Nope. Not on my watch, I mean really. Who in the hell does this guy think he is? 
There was absolutely no way I was letting my bestie be in the same room as this low life. I looked at Richard with the look that could kill a bear. This frat house reject was beyond disrespectful. I went to excuse Tiffany and myself from the table so we could call an Uber to come and take us back to our apartment. Right when I stood up, Theo stood again. He had made his way over to Tiffany and started to pull her by the arm. Excuse me. Let me go. She said. Her voice was raised just loud enough to get the message across, but not too loud to interrupt anyone else's meal. He didn't comprehend though. Come on now, baby. Don't be like that. Let Daddy Theo take care of you, the arrogant prick replied. Hey man, I think it's time you went home, Richard said as he tugged on Theo to get him to save himself from a one-way ticket to Pepper Spray City. Theo didn't get the hint though. Out of nowhere, bad boy Jeremy pops out of the shadows. No words, no sense of consulting with Theo. Just a right haymaker that would make Floyd Mayweather proud. Theo hit the ground, and Richard dropped to help his buddy up. Theo was escorted out of the restaurant, and Jeremy was kindly asked to follow, or else he have to answer to the authorities. I guess a guy like him couldn't afford another notch on his record, so he left abruptly. Well, that is not without asking Tiffany if she was alright first. Richard called an Uber for Theo and apologized profusely for his action, before taking us back home. Even through all the chaos, Tiffany didn't seem that upset. Actually, she seemed rather vibrant after that altercation. What was going through her mind? Surely she didn't think that this grease extra Jeremy was her knight in shining armor. A few weeks had passed since that night at the restaurant, and Tiffany was ready to step out of her shell and try to meet someone to take her mind off of work. I mean, the only people she had to communicate throughout most of her days were teenagers that acted like wild animals. I convinced her to take a few selfies and post them to Tinder. Within no time her inbox was overflowing with the thirsty locals. Messages like what's up cutie? How big are they, or the tried and true? So do you have an OnlyFans? Simply appalling. I mean, the girl had pictures of her at work, or fully clothed tasteful pictures. Nowhere in sight was there any one photo that indicated she had a private life to sell pictures for money. This was a disaster. I knew it would be bad, but hundreds of matches a day, and not one of them were even remotely what she was looking for. She had told me a few times that she wanted to delete it and just go back to how things were, but there was no way I was going to let her go back to third wheeling with me and Richard. I thought all hope was lost for this poor girl. Until one day, a surprising match came through her phone. I took a look at her screen and asked, Girl, is that who I think it is? Lo and behold it was the biker king himself. You guessed it. Jeremy. Standing there in front of his Harley, looking like a side character for Sons of Anarchy. I wanted to vomit in my mouth a little, but she was smiling like a schoolgirl. I knew the meeting at the bar was as rare as catching lightning in a bottle, but getting struck twice in the same day? This had to be a cruel joke played by fate. Nothing I said would break through that high school giggle she had let out when she messaged him. It was your typical nonchalant icebreaker. Hey! Do I know you from somewhere, she knew good and damn well where she knew him. It was so bad that it was cute. He played his role as a gentleman and replied with I think you're the model I fought a guy for. That was it. She was all done but the singing. There was no man alive that could rip her thumbs away from her phone after that. Day in and day out they messaged, telling each other their origin stories, the likes and dislikes, even why pineapple is an underrated pizza topping. I was the local library of Tiffany at that time, but this guy was getting more out about her life in a week than I had gotten out of her in a year. She was completely smitten over him. You would think it was out of some kind of Disney movie. The way his words seemed like poetry, I mean, even I had to admit that this guy was more than met the eye. Tiffany talked to him throughout the whole month of April and they hadn't been on a first date yet. This was becoming pointless, it's clear she wasn't going to make the first move, and he was too much of a gentleman to push the envelope. 
especially after what he had seen out of Theo. I interjected their love fest and made a statement. Girl. You've been talking to him for a month. Ask him out already. If you're not comfortable being alone with him, Richard and I will come with you. It'll be like a double date. Becca, that's so nice of you, she said. Would you and Richard do that for me? I figured I could stomach him for a few hours if it were to mean Tiffany was safe. So I snatched the phone out of her hands and sent a message asking if he wanted to meet at the bar this Saturday. Her eyes grew as big as a grapefruit. She struggled to get the phone back out of my hands and into hers. By that time he had already responded with, sure, I'll pick you up around 9. See, that was easy as 1, 2, 3. This chapter in the book of Tiffany's first dates didn't include a fancy dress or the red carpet treatment as our previous double date. We decided to dress down a little since this was a bar meet. We had gotten fully ready and Jeremy pulls up, as if it were clockwork. 9 p.m. on the dot. This guy was good. Richard and I hopped into his car while Tiffany, scared as ever, hopped onto Jeremy's motorcycle. This was her first time riding so she gripped him as tight as her short arms could. Her smile never wavered though. She was as happy as could be, and I was happy for her. The bar was a few blocks over so we made it there in no time. We sat at a table and ordered our drinks. Nothing out of the ordinary. A few lemon drops for the ladies, and a round of whiskey neats for the fellas. This was turning out to be a surprisingly good time. The liquor took away a lot of the first-time jitters, which in turn made everyone more apt to conversation. We learned a lot about Jeremy. He's originally from Washington State but moved down this way to help take care of his mother has a master's degree in cybersecurity and works for multiple firms as the lead security tech. Not to mention he brings in seven figures a year. Never judge a book by its cover, am I right? He seemed like a regular guy that was in the same boat as Tiffany. However, the night was growing late and Richard had to get home to get his affairs in order for the morning's work day. He offered to take Tiffany home but she gently declined. She wanted to hang out some more, and felt safe enough that we could leave her there. Jeremy obliged, and gave his phone number and address just in case something happened. This was a big step for me. It felt like a mother bird letting her hatchling fly off for the first time. But I knew I couldn't keep her to myself anymore. I had to let her venture off into the world. I told Tiffany to wear protection as we stood from the table heading out. She let out a laugh, and told me to get lost. I looked back at that bar table one last time as they continued talking and enjoying each other's company. It's funny how the universe works sometimes. I was restless and couldn't get comfortable, knowing that I had left my best friend with some stranger. It was nearing 3 a.m. and she still wasn't home. I checked up on her every hour and she responded right after. So I knew she was good, but something in my gut was telling me otherwise. I got up from my bed to get something to drink, maybe a glass of water would cure this unrest I had going on. I hadn't checked my phone in a little while, so I gave it a glance just to make sure everything was alright. Tiffany had sent me a message asking if I was up. As soon as the text status changed to the read status a call came through. It was Tiffany. But why was she calling? Maybe she misplaced something. I answered and said hey girl. So how big is it, but this was no time for games. I could hear her sobbing through the phone. What happened? What did he do? She said that she didn't have long to talk, and that he was coming back up the stairs. She said she had made a mistake and that she needed help. I didn't care what the situation was, or why it was happening. I just knew I needed to get to her as fast as possible. I rushed to my car and floored it. Heading towards the address that was given. Two miles away. That's how far he lived. It would take five minutes at the pace I was driving. I had to beat that, I had to make it in two. I disregarded the red lights and sped through stop signs. Tickets be damned. 
I called Richard and told him Tiffany was in trouble, and to meet me at the address given. Richard without hesitation said he's getting in his car now. It should take him 15 minutes to get there. Good thing Mama didn't raise a fool. Being from South Dakota, we had plenty of land to practice our shooting aim, and I was packing a Smith & Weston 9mm. He had messed with the wrong girls. The call had ended two minutes ago and I was approaching his apartment. Or at least, what I thought was his apartment. It was some rundown, corroding building that was supposed to have been torn down last year. I could see a shadow in the window so I knew it was occupied. Swiftly, I made my way into the building. This was worse than anyone could imagine. Hanging on the walls, all throughout that entrance you could see them. Pictures of Tiffany. Pictures of her in the shower, pictures of her at work, pictures of her leaving her favorite juice vendor, of her entering the gym. There was even a picture of her and I laying in her bed watching a scary movie. What kind of freak was this? And how did he gain access to our personal life? Those questions would be answered when I got my hands on the son of a bitch. As I made my way upstairs I could hear a smug voice. It resembled that of nails on a chalkboard. Jeremy had somehow knew I was in that building. Hello Rebecca. Nice of you to join our after party. Are you looking for Tiffany? She's a little tied up right now. But me and you can have a little fun, like really dude? A rope joke? 1998 called and said they wanted their joke back. His overconfident ways had given his position. I was close, I could hear Tiffany struggling in the background of it all. I played along with him. Look dude. Whatever you want, I'll give it to you. What do you want? Money? I've got it. Just let her go. The hair stood on top of my arms as he replied, money? Do you think that's what this is about? Money? No, 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 Rebecca. This isn't about money. This is about love. You see, Tiffany is just like me. A lost soul in this sea of worthless humans. I came to save her from it all. Do you have any idea how hard it is to find someone as genuine as her in this town? Let alone this world? This is destiny. I've been following her for months. Waiting to get the chance to finally speak to her. I thought all hope was lost. Until I seen her at the bar. It was like the stars aligned and the galaxy had given us the chance to meet. She was perfect that night. But you and your boy toy set her up with that idiot Theo. Do you know how bad that hurt me? I couldn't let it happen again. So now I'm taking all precautions to make sure that never happens again. She's mine, and if you want her back, you'll have to pry her from my cold dead hands. That is. Unless I get you first. This bastard had done just enough talking so that I could position myself right behind him. I let off a shot, bullseye. My dad would be so proud of his little girl. But something wasn't right. His body didn't fall to the ground. He was still standing. I had landed the perfect body shot to inflict enough impact to send him to eternal flames. It was a mannequin. He had tricked me. A blunt strike had fallen upon the back of my head and down I went. I was out cold. He won. I was awakened by the sound of Tiffany's cries through what seemed like a mile of cloth. There she was, sitting to me bound in rope, wiggling as fast as her body would let her. Good morning, beautiful. I hope you slept good, Jeremy said in a victorious voice. He sat in a chair in front of Tiffany and I, holding my gun in his hand. The barrel was pointed directly at me, and there was nowhere for me to run. Tears slowly started to fall from my eyes. I had lost all feeling that we would make it out of this together. You know what? This is almost poetic, Jeremy said. I could feel another monologue coming about. The best friend coming to the rescue, except this time the good girl doesn't win. She doesn't escape, 
and she doesn't leave the hero. You stood in the way of destiny, and for that you have to be punished. The only question is how. How should I do it? Maybe I'll chop your limbs off one by one and toss them in each one of the states me and Tiffany visit. Or maybe I'll simply make it look like a suicide. I mean, why else would a girl like you come to a place like this? Or maybe I'll enjoy myself and slowly beat your ass until your eyes pop out of their sockets. Decisions, decisions. While we figure that out though, how about we start by taking you downstairs? At that point Jeremy grabbed the ropes that were tied around my upper torso and started to drag me down across the room. No matter how hard I fought, he overpowered me. I was completely out of my element. The muffled cries from Tiffany didn't affect his final decision as I was slowly taken out of her voice's range. Down the steps we went. One by one, I could feel every thud as my body bounced off of every step on the way down. I was completely petrified at the thought of what's to come. My body was limp, I guess my brain had clocked out early, and the will to fight was all but gone. Jeremy sat me on the dusty couch and proceeded to unbuckle his pants. I guess he wanted to get one last hurrah out before giving himself solely to Tiffany. Wait. Was that a glass window breaking? Wait. I had completely forgot that I called Richard. And not a moment too soon. He rushed in that room like a wild man. He wrestled the gun out of Jeremy's hands and even managed to pin him to the ground. Babe! Are you okay? Where's Tiffany? He asked as he held Jeremy's hands to the ground. I was so relieved, this man is getting the marriage of a lifetime once we leave here. I guess Jeremy wasn't a boy scout because his knots were absolute shit. I managed to free one of my hands before I heard it. Bang! A shot. But from where? The gun had been knocked out of the picture. Or was it? There it was. Jeremy holding on to it with all of his might. Richard's body went limp and slowly fell to the ground. The blood came gushing out of him as Jeremy pushed him off. Panting, he let off two more shots. Bang! Bang! No, it couldn't be. My love. The only man that had ever done anything for me. I was in shock. My hearing had went, and all I could smell was freshly fired gunpowder. Jeremy stood to his feet and held the gun in front of me once more. Well. I guess we can skip plan A and move right to plan B. Bye bye Becca, he said with the biggest shit-eating grin known to man. I was ready though. I had accepted my fate. Before the final moments of my life I heard a cracking of glass. Was it the angels opening heaven's gates for me? No. It was Tiffany with a Ken Griffey Jr. home run swing. A vase to the head usually does the trick. The pieces of shattered glass hit the floor, and soon after Jeremy followed. But I had watched enough thrillers to know that this wasn't the end. He had a second wind coming and would take us both out. The gun hit the ground and so did I. While he was immobilized, I grabbed the pistol and took aim. Bang! 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 Click click click! Two to the head, and two to the back. That should keep him down. As I dropped the gun, Tiffany ran over and gave me the biggest hug. It was over, the night was finally over. I guess all the shots that were let off into Richard had gotten someone's attention. We heard the sirens from police cars and the medical unit getting closer and closer by the second. Tiffany and I dropped over Richard's body awaiting their arrival. It was the most beautiful sound we had ever heard. Time goes on and the days since that faithful night turns into months. Not a moment passes that I don't recall that day though. Tiffany deleted all forms of social media as did I. There was no need to find a new flame or search for a good morning beautiful text. We stray away from bars and have given all of our free time to self-defense classes. I can throw a mean round kick now. If you take nothing else away from the sentry, know this. 
everything that glitters isn't gold.